sharing Festivus memories both old and new, with family and friends gathering around to make you not feel so blue, what more could you ask for during the holiday season? Well, maybe you don't want so many memories bubbling up, like the time you were playing with your Red Ryder BB gun in your backyard, and you didn't listen to the warnings of don't shoot your eye out, don't shoot your eye out, don't shoot your eye out. And then as an adult, you almost snowballed somebody else's eye out because you didn't goddamn learn. Like the people in A Christmas Story Christmas, an HBO Max original that has a sequel to, get, you know what, get some eggnog, get some cider, get a gingerbread cookie, maybe not a ginger snap, this is not a horror movie, no, we're not a horror movie franchise here about blood-sucking individuals, how'd they make that a franchise, I'll never understand. It's a sequel to A Christmas Story from 1983, the praised and loathed um, you know, modern classic that plays on a constant goddamn loop while well, inside the heads of many people and also Turner Network executives because they do a marathon run <coughs> Christmas Eve into Christmas Day. And yeah, it's either loved, loathed, or if you're like me and I know I am, you appreciate it, but maybe it's not the best thing ever. I did retro review just a couple days ago. You can check that out. But yep, this is a continuation of the story of Ralphie Parker, played by Peter Billingsley. And he also helped write the movie. Kind of makes sense, considering that he's one of the returning <coughs> actors from the original. There aren't that many returning actors from the original. Well, on account of the fact that it's been almost 40 years since the original came out. And also, a lot of the actors are either old or, in the case of Darren McDavid, who played the dad, the best goddamn character in the original, dead. He has been dead since 2006. And this was written and directed by Clay... Katis, who did the Angry Birds movie and Christmas Chronicles, <laughs> and was also written by Nick Schneck, and I kept wanting to call him Nick Schmuck for whatever reason. He did Gran Torino, Cry Macho, and The Mule. Apparently, he provided the old angry man uh, you know, perspective because all those starred Clint Eastwood. Boy, the fact that he got his start in <laughs> Revenge of the Creature, goddamn mind-blowing, isn't it? Oh, this guy sucks. This is his first and last movie. Anyway, if you're an MST3K fan, you'll appreciate that. So, yeah, it's a, the continuation of Ralphie's story, where in the early 1940s, it had to have been 40-41 because of the whole Orphan Annie Secret Dakota ring, drink more Ovaltine. He now has kids and a wife, and <clears throat> he is trying to give them the best Christmas. He's a struggling writer. His wife, um, you know, and him help make ends meet. It's set in 1973, and by Christ, can you tell with all the ugly wallpaper decor and the fact that they drive a 66 Plymouth that has a radiator issue, you crack an egg in it, and it seals it at least for a little bit. That's an actual trick that does work, at least most of the time. And I actually had a 67 Plymouth when I was a kid. I didn't. I couldn't drive because I was a child. But boy, those cars were fun. Uncomfortable seats in the spring would just go right up and make you feel like you know springs. <laughs> Honey, get the swatter. Yeah, I'm trying to have fun with this because there really isn't a ton to recount when it comes to the plot. I will say, though, that this movie, I, I wasn't exactly looking forward to it because Peter Billingsley, he does fine. There's uh, Julie Haggerty, who I can't unhear, I, I can't unhear airplane lines whenever she talks. I, I just can't. Aaron Hayes plays uh, Ralphie's wife. And things that I liked about the original Christmas story. Darren McGavin, he was great. And there were some good, you know, good things about the perspective of Christmas from, you know, well, a child's perspective, how he views things, how he deals with bullies, deals with everyday life, and also growing up in Indiana when there's about 18,000 feet of snow. Or so I've heard. <laughs> the thing is that some of that movie hasn't aged all that well, especially the ending scene in the Asian restaurant, but there are parts of it that were good. Some of the comedy hit, some of it missed. There were some touching moments, but overall the movie is decent. It's not great, but it's decent. This one, <clears throat> it has some returning characters like Schwartz <clears throat> and Flick. Flick, who actually has the last name of Schwartz, and I've always found that funny. I just have, I mentioned it in the uh, retro view I did of A Christmas Story. And with this, it's just basically Ralphie coming to grips and trying to give his, you know, coming to grips with his past, trying to, you know, give his children a great Christmas. And also, he is struggling to present his novel in the best way possible. Not only does he have a bit of writer's block, he also feels that his 
product is really, really good, but publishers just aren't going for it. They just aren't going for it. And then he gets some news that leads to a series of um, series of events, like reconnecting, you know, with his family, reconnecting with old friends, because him and his wife and children are living in Chicago. They go back to Indiana, and they help the mom around Christmas. I think you can figure out what it is, but I'm going to keep it vague just for those that have not, that maybe haven't seen the trailer or maybe didn't quite pick up on it. <laughs> but from there, we get a series of, you know, Ralphie reflecting on stuff like dealing with bullies and dealing with other stuff. The Bumperses, Bumperses, um, you know, Bloodhound Gang, somehow they're still alive or they're new dogs or whatever. Maybe they're immortal. Maybe they're Cerberuses. I have no idea. But... You know, the kids get to see where their dad grew up, and they get to find out about stuff. And there were moments that actually, actually, the, I think the thing that this movie got the most was honoring Darren McGavin. I I actually think that's probably the biggest selling point here for anybody that has lost a parent. <clears throat> so I guess I just kind of spoiled what the whole plot twist was. But it'd be hard to bring anybody back. You couldn't have anybody re replace Darren McGavin. You, you just couldn't. Also, it gave a good emotional hook for this. And that was actually probably the best part of this movie. None of the comedy really hit. It wasn't groan-inducing. It was just flat. Very, very flat. But the touching stuff about the dad and reflecting and Ralphie wanting to do good, that was good shit. That could almost bring a tear to a glass eye like your Columbo. Actually, in all seriousness, there are a few tears that could be shed here, especially if you happen to have suffered that loss or if Christmas can bring good and bad memories to you. This actually is a pretty good follow-up to A Christmas Story, and I didn't think I'd say that because I didn't think I'd really end up enjoying this all that much. It <clears throat> ends up being a lot better, I think, than it had any right to be. And there are other characters that show up, like the bully, um, <clears throat> you know, Far uh, Farkas, a.k.a. Zach Ward, who pretty much looks the same. And he's like 52. <laughs> and it's just, it's just hilarious. There are good moments as far as honoring the memory of Christmas and remembering what Christmas is all about. And then there are some, you know, they pay homage to the original on multiple occasions. Some hit, some don't. But overall, it ends up being a whole lot better than it has any right to be. And I gotta say that Everybody involved seemed like they were having a good time. They did some good stuff. I don't think they need to do another one. We do not need in another, you know, 10 or so years, or say in another 20 years, we don't need the kids continuing with a Grandpa Ralphie and everything. We don't need that. But as far as this, you know, standalone sequel, let's just ignore my summer story. Let's ignore A Christmas Story 2. Why the hell did they make that boogaloo? It ends up being actually pretty good. It ends up being pretty good overall. There are going to be a few spoilers here, like it really goddamn matters. <clears throat> but that's really all I got to say about that. So anyway, it's on Disney+. Plus. Or it's not on Disney+. Plus. It's on HBO Max. I'm amazed it's actually not on Disney+. Plus. I'm amazed Disney just didn't say, hey, we're going to swallow up this because we're swallowing up everything else. But it's on HBO Max. Feel free to check it out. And there you go. Peter Billingsley, he does, he does great here. Julie Haggerty's a treasure. There's some good stuff here, even if the kids are kind of boring and annoying. Three, two, one, spoilers. Okay, so <clears throat> Flick <clears throat> owns a bar. Schwartz is a drunk. And uh, Farkas is a cop. Basically, after getting beat up uh, by Ralphie, he decided to turn his life around, be less of a heathen. And it also turns out that his kids are, you know, pranking and bullying those in the neighborhood, <clears throat> like riding around on a, you know, a snowmobile. And the kids are being picked on, Ralphie's kids are being picked on, and they eventually set up a snowman right over the stump where they wreck their goddamn snowmobile, because funny, hey, they didn't beat him up, they let them, I'm gonna kick my own ass. And <clears throat> the stuff with Ralphie reflecting about his dad, that'll get you. Yeah, okay, it's maybe a little bit. It's endearing enough, maybe a little heavy-handed. I could see people saying that. Again, the comedy doesn't hit at all. But overall, it ends up being a whole lot better. I think it has any right to be. There's a snowball fight where the daughter gets hit in the face with a snowball. Oh no, you're gonna get, you're gonna, you know, snowball your eye out and everything. Call back to that. A guy had his hand stuck in a glass in the hospital. Julie Haggerty was either laughing or falling asleep, and I don't think that was necessarily acting. 
And there was this one part with the slide where they tried the triple dog there instead of, you know, sticking your tongue to the pole, uh, to the frozen pole. <laughs> slide down this slide and everything. Break your back and you can have your bar tab cleared. And it, it ends up being fine. It ends up being fine overall with some good emotional tugs. And every, it, the one good part I will say at the end, because... While they're in the hospital, uh, somebody breaks into their car and robs and takes the gifts, uh, you know, steals the gifts and everything, because who the hell would, you know, what kind of piece of shit um, would do that? I mean, goddamn, I mean, you'd steal from people, especially from kids on Christmas, steal from anybody on Christmas, you're goddamn scumbags. But, you know, they're, before that, Ralphie's out shopping, doing some stuff. He can't get his book published. He decides to throw that away. He's going to go back to working, doing the rat race, you know, doing the grind. And he is uh, tasked by his mother to write an obituary for the dad. And it turns out that actually that that ends up kicking off his writing career when all hope seemed lost. Near the end, um, there are gifts. <laughs> there are suddenly, you know, after they, they scraped together some money and bought some gifts. But wait, where are all these other gifts come from? From dad, from grandpa. He bought stuff before, before he passed. Darren McGavin really had a goddamn vision because he died in 2006. And somehow, these gifts are here. I kid, I kid. But in all seriousness, that was a pretty cool moment. He saw the foresight before that. And then they have a family get together and all that. Everything's good. Friends are there. People, you know, the story being brought forward. And then he is going to throw away some trash. <laughs> and people are saying... Well, congratulations, congratulations. Um, you know, about all about all that, actually, the, the writing came a little bit before the family and friend dinner because he had thrown away his manuscript and then the wife had given it to the newspaper. So it had been published. It was going to be taken <clears throat> into syndication and he was going to have a writing career. So there you go. And then the family and friend dinner and all that, and everything's brought forward and it's it's fun. It's it's fun at times. It's more endearing. The comedy does not work. I'm going to give it a B. It, it, it works overall, even if it's not perfect. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ripplin. I'll see you soon.